Welcome back guys, this week I start the trailer build for the Sharpie trailer yacht I'm building. One of the first jobs before I start on the trailer, so I can get at those wheels, is to move all the sticking timber. Well that's all the steel that I've just gone and picked up. You can go probably a little bit lighter for box section or RHS. I assembled one wheel with its um, bearings on the Duratorque because I really wanted to make sure before I finalised the drawing. I've literally spent days and days on the drawing and um, there's my lengths of channel 100 by 50, 4 inches by 2 inches um, with all the cut lengths and there's a, some more detail of the drawing. It's in 3D of course as well. But I went between different arrangements, like having the channel run right up to the tow ball. There was a lot of rain last night, and already the steels show me that don't mess around, I'm going to get rusty. And my audience, oh, I've put them to sleep, there's just no action. The ducks sure couldn't resist checking out the first cut. To calculate how much draw bar weight, um, it took me a little bit of getting my head around, but I knew I had to know the total weight, which was um, 1200 kgs, trailer and boat combined, and I had to find the centre of gravity of both of them, leaving out the wheels because they're neutral. So to understand it, a sort of force diagram, take an example here of four units and a quarter of the way along that you have a weight of one kilogram this is the pivot point back here which is the same in the trailer case as the axle so you want to know the force here to lift one kg at a distance of four times that so basically that equals one divided by four which equals 0.25 times the weight one kg equals 0.25 kgs at position 4 at this distance here. So that helped me get my head around it and then I went to this simple calculation um, because I've started building the trailer and I hadn't fully worked this out um, and it's pretty critical that you don't go over 100 kgs or probably much less than 50 kgs on the tow ball weight on the trailer. So for me in my situation it turned out to be 250 millimeters ahead of the pivot point the total distance from the pivot point the fulcrum the axle is um, 5115 and so you divide that by that and you get this number here then you multiply that by the total kgs and so that gives me a total weight of 58 kgs. I actually moved the axles 200 millimeters further aft to give a total total weight, tongue weight, of 100 kgs, which seemed more desirable after doing a bit of research. Here's my spreadsheet I used for the original calculation of the boat, but I needed to add the trailer into it. So I've added all the parts, I've added all the units, like meters of channel, for example, the meter weight that gives you the totals which adds to the total of the boat and trailer things aren't in their final positions yet but I set up the frame on these blocks why am I cutting off the ends because they're so damn rough look how out of square they are one of the flanges on all of them from what I've seen is not square What is it with ducks and building a boat trailer? I said in my last video they are always around for the action. <laughs> Better that guys, haven't you got anything better to do? What I'm doing here is to do this to it because with channel design you can't really avoid that somewhere in the design so because that's going to have to fit inside 
one of the other pieces. This is of course for galvanizing to allow the zinc to run out. So it's a little bit of extra time but there are little bits of extra time as well with um, rolled hollow section RHS because you've got to um, drill holes inside. Lots of holes for the zinc to get out. Less so for this and in the long term it's much better. You can see everywhere and stop rust when it starts. And it will start. I'm making a really big push today because there's, there's some heavy rain coming Tuesday. There's quite a structural cross member to go right across between those two. The sides have yet to be lined up, but we're getting there. Lots of rain inside jobs today and maybe tomorrow. This is a job I had to do anyway. I assembled all the hubs with the bearings and the Duratorque suspensions. Put a wheel on one, got four of them done.
Well, I've got to a more complicated part of the job. I've put the first Duratalk on here just to um, try and work out how I'm going to do this. I can't do one at a time. They've all got to be done together because they've got to be parallel, um, which you can achieve because there's slotted holes and the saddle can slide along. They've got to be square, so there's no toe-in. To further complicate it, I've got those braces on there, and although I've fully welded it on the side, I just know when I let that brace go that um, things will move a little bit, and then there's the complication of when I roll it over and weld the other side, how much further will it move? I don't think a great amount, but all the same, there is the possibility. Um, these positions are pretty fixed once you, once you set them up. As you can see here, there's a lot of extra holes. Um, this, this is an in, inboard one that will go here. Um, because, so the saddle goes on there to clamp the Duratorque. And I've made it so that I can move it one position this way or that way. Because you see quite often online, people are not happy with um, how much weight is on the toe ball, on the tongue. So they want to move their suspension backwards or forwards, or they've just bought a new trailer and they're adapting it to their boat. This way, I can move the suspension back or forwards, despite being fairly confident I'll have it in the right place without welding anything. So I'll have to do the same for the guards, of course. So that's probably a good place to leave this video. There's at least another week's work in it. And so there'll be part two next week. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, it's been a big learning curve for me, building a trailer, my first trailer. Well, I did build a trailer at school, a little steel trailer for a little um, cherub yacht that my brother and I used to race. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a like and a subscribe. And I'd love to hear your comments and suggestions. Part two will be next week and hopefully that will wrap up the trailer.